Hi, everybody. Oh, welcome. Uh, it's just about five o'clock now, my time, and I thought I would uh, get started then. Um, I don't think anybody's watching live, but if you're watching on YouTube, hello. And if you're watching in the future, hello. If you're watching at any point, hello. I'm Kevin. Uh, I'm an astronomer uh, at the University of Arizona. I do a lot of live streams here uh, every other week about various astronomy topics. Um, but uh, this week I wanted to start a new series that might be fun if you are interested in stargazing. Uh, I, uh, I saw a tweet a couple, like a week ago, from an astronomer. And the astronomer was like, I'm an astronomer and I don't know any of the stars. And I was realizing that many astronomers and many people aren't familiar with the stars. Especially if you live in a city, you probably don't have a relationship where you go out at night and look at the stars. And if you do, you may not recognize them. And so I thought I'd write up, like make a little series that kind of gets you familiar with the stars. Uh, it's going to be a pretty straightforward series. We may go an hour. We may just go as long as I, I think it might be helpful. And I'll show you some tools that I use and some ways that I learn the stars. Um, and then hopefully we can come uh, every, I guess, month or so, and um, or every you know couple months, and just look at the, the stars that might be up that month. So we'll start maybe just with today, kind of getting ourselves oriented, and I'll show you some tools and things, and uh, it'll be pretty fun. Um, so this is not what I've been using recently to, 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 um, uh, to uh, stream with. Uh, this piece of software is different. This is a piece of software called Stellarium. And so Stellarium is a piece of software that is essentially a very, it's a free, you can go to Stellarium's website, just Google Stellarium. Uh, and it's a piece of software that allows you to simulate what the night sky might look like at anywhere in the world at any time, you know. And it's pretty cool. So that's what we're going to be using here to simulate the night sky. I could use Space Engine, which I normally use. And Space Engine is pretty good for, um, for simulating this. But I wanted to use this because Stellarium is specific to stargazing. It's a great tool if you want to know where's the moon going to be at a certain time of year and where, what stars are going to be up. And Stellarium, I think, is pretty good. It's also very easy to use. And again, it's free. Space Engine costs money. I like Space Engine. I recommend Space Engine. But for this, I'm going to be using Stellarium. So that's what you're seeing behind me. I'm sitting in a field here. But what's cool about Stellarium is that you can change the, the well, not just the location, but you can change the, the viewing options. So I can change, um, um, well, I don't know why that looks like that. Uh, let's turn that off. Um, can I do... Markings landscape. I can change it to various other things here. Um, there we go. That's what I want. I could look at what it looks like on Neptune if I wanted to look at what it would look like on Neptune. Um, in Grossmügel, which is in Lower Austria, right? But like, let's just go back to Garking, which I, I think, or wait, was I in Gerens? Um, yeah, which is this nice field here. Um, I live in Tucson, so that's what um, I have listed here. Uh, and so you can see that this is not what Tucson looks like, this beautiful green field we have around us. But it's not really important. What mostly I'm, I'm, I'm simulating right now is that we've just got this, this pretty field where we can see the stars. And what I recommend is if you are wanting to um, go out and look at the stars, you find a place where you can see the stars where it's not like, you know, like there, there's another um, viewing options window where you could do this. This would be a bad place to look at the stars, right? You know, it's a very pretty snowy field, but like you've got all these trees in the way. And so maybe if you looked over here, you know, it'd be a little bit better. And, but the types of trees or the buildings that are around you are going to limit. However, if all you want to do is just go out in your backyard, this would be a pretty good place to just go out. You know, like you just, you're going to want to look in, in, in one direction and not in the other here. But I'm going to switch this back to, um, uh, to Guerin's, which is this small French village in the valley of the Saône River. Pretty nice, right? And so right now, this is set to what it would be right right now for me, which is around uh, 5.04. This is going to be in, in 24-hour time, so that's why it says 17.04 down here. But you can always look down here and see what time it is. But it's 5.04, and so the sun's up here, right, in the sky. And so, you know, the the first thing when it comes to stargazing, and probably the most important thing, is I'm very lucky. In, in Stellarium, there's like little letters down here on the horizon showing you north, Northeast, east, but and when I do planetarium shows, which is how I learn the stars, um, I had to start by telling everyone, "Hi Ben, uh, welcome. It's nice to it's nice to see you here. Um, hopefully you can learn something about stargazing because that's what's cool about this is that everyone has access to the sky. Unless you're a mole person watching, you can go and look at the stars, right? And the first thing is figure out which way north is, right? Well, on my phone, I can like you know, hey Siri, open the compass. 
Look, I don't even have to go search for it. And if I have a compass, I can use a compass and figure out which way north is, which in this case is this direction, right? But like, what's nice about figuring out north, south, east, west is if you don't have your phone, you can use a couple tools. One, most streets in America, at least, um, outside of like places like Boston or Washington, D.C., most streets are oriented north, south, or east, west. Generally, we do that. And so you can say, all right, what's my street? Well, either that's north, south, or east, west. And you can use another factoid if it's during the day. Think about where the sun has set, okay? So the sun is going to set generally in the west, and it's going to rise in the east. So you can see right now the sun is setting towards the west, the little W down here. And so sun rises in the east, sets in the west. And so if you figure that out, then you remember that if you're looking east, north will be to your left. If you're looking west, where the sun has just set, north will be to your right. And you don't have to get it exactly right. I'm lucky that Stellarium here allows me to look and see it exactly where it is. But you could just get in the ballpark, and then we'll find the stars after that, okay? And so this is the first important thing, which is finding north, south, east, and west. North, and the way that you think about it, if you know north, it goes north, east, south, west. Clockwise, which is, you know, because we're right-handed, that's why clockwise matters, I guess. Clockwise, it goes never eat sour, soggy waffles. That's one of the ones, or I grew, grew up and it was never eat shredded wheat, but I like shredded wheat. Never eat sour worms, northeast, southwest, clockwise, okay? And just having that, knowing that, pretty important for stargazing because you're going to want to look and see things that are on the eastern horizon or the western horizon or the southern horizon. And getting a familiarity when it comes to stargazing is, like, key, because what, when, when I think about stargazing, I think of two things. I think, all right, which way am I looking? And then two, what time of year is it? Okay, and we'll get to that a little bit later. Currently, it's the summer. So I'm thinking summer constellations are up, right? We're seeing some of the spring constellations. They should be low on the horizon earlier in the evening. But these things are things you'll familiarize yourself later. But for right now, if I'm standing outside, I'm thinking, how do I figure out north? Okay, and generally, when I go and do these stargazing things, I'll try to keep in mind... Which way is what did the sun just set? Because that's west, which means if I'm looking that way, to my right should be north. And knowing where north is is pretty important. Hi, Dr. Jones. Pretty important, okay? So in this case, we've got this little N here. In fact, let's look over here. And I, what's cool about Solarium is I can make time go by pretty fast. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make time go by to sunset. So you can see the sun is setting. And it's not setting exactly west. And we'll talk about that in a second. It sets a little bit north of west, which is interesting, right? Most people don't, you know, don't really think about this. They think... Ah, the sun rises exactly east, it goes directly overhead, and it sets exactly west. But that's not the case. Look, if we go back to noon, let's go back to noon, my time, 15, 14, 13, 12. Uh, so we'll go a little bit farther. And so again, if you're looking for where where this is, then like at the very bottom middle of the screen, you can see that it says 2020, 06, 29, 12, 06. That's telling me what time it is. But look at where the sun is. Okay, so now we're at, it's at noon, right? So you'd expect that it's right directly above us. And in this case, it almost is directly above us. If I zoom out here, you can see it's pretty close to being directly above us. But it's not, right? If I go through, you know, it sets a little bit north of west. And if I go backwards, it rises a little bit north of east. And here's an important thing, okay? If we zoom back down, this is a really crazy fisheye lens view. When we get to arc seconds, hopefully we don't have to, when it comes to naked eye stargazing, think about arc seconds. Um, but I want to just say the the reason the sun rises a little bit north of east and sets a little bit north of west is because of where I am on the earth and what time of year it is, right? The earth is tilted on its axis, which means it's kind of pointed towards the sun a little bit right now, which means you get longer days, which is why it's hotter, and the sun gets more directly overhead, also why it's hotter. In the winter, if we go change our time to the winter, so let's go change this to like December 29th of 2019, all right? So it's five in the morning. Look where the sun has risen. A little bit south of east. It's almost at southeast here. Pretty cool, right? And it's going to go, and like if I go to noon, here's it at noon. Are you ready? This is pretty wild. That's noon, where I live. That's the sun at noon. Not directly overhead. If we zoom back out, that's how far the sun gets. Pretty interesting, right? And that's because the earth at this point is tilted away from the sun, which means that the sun is lower on the horizon at noon. Okay, you get shorter days, and the sunlight's more at an angle, which means it gets a little, it's a little less direct, and it's, it's a little cooler. This is why, by the way, we have seasons. If someone says we have seasons because we're closer to the sun or farther from the sun, no. It's because the sun takes longer during the day in the summer, like you know, and it's more directly overhead, beaming its light down to us, as opposed to kind of spreading the light out because it's coming at an angle. But anyway, let's set it back to now. 
So I can press eight on this program and set it back to now. And if we go back to the west, you can see the sun getting ready to set. Okay, so let's go to sunset, right? So this will tell me kind of where west-ish is. And if we go right to sunset, and you can always look up, you know, here, watch. I can, this is what's cool about this. Hey, Siri, when's sunset? Sunset will be at 7.34 p.m. today. Ah, sunset will be at 7.34, right? I can just ask my phone, and it'll tell me. And if you go look, three, boom. Sunset has just happened, 1934, 7.34. And you can see, no stars. Sunset's not the time to go look at the stars. Still, you get this twilight haze. When you're an astronomer, sunset's about when you're starting to do your first calibration images of the sky. We could talk about that later. But mostly right now, sunset's just a time where... We can know, ah, this is where the sun is set. It's west, meaning if I look to the right a little bit, 90 degrees-ish, I'll get north-ish, which in this bit, case has a building near it, you know. So if I was out in this field, I'd go, ah, this tree is where the sun has set. That must be west-ish, which means this building over 90 degrees to the right must be north. And then east must be this big flat area with nothing. And south must be, I don't know, this little grove of trees, right? So I just do this. I would orient myself. I'm standing out in this field. I'd go, ah, this is north. This is south. This is east. This is west, okay? And you can do that in your own backyard. You can go out right now with your phone and say, ah, okay, if I'm in my backyard, north is towards the building. You know, like if I was in my backyard right now, my house would be north of me. So I'd know I probably want to look towards the south tonight because my house will be in the way with north, right? If we went back to that, um, whoops, do, 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 do. if we went back to the sky and viewing windows and put this back on, we'd go, you know what? I probably don't want to look at things to the west because in the northwest because there's all these trees in the way. So I want to look at things tonight. What are the things I want to look at? I want to look at things at night that are in the southeast. That would be really great, okay? And so it really depends on where, where you have. If you're really lucky and you have this beautiful, you know, field that you could just go out in, nice, nice, you know, if you can get it, you've got everything except maybe right where the sun is set. You might have some stuff with this dumb big tree. Not dumb, this beautiful big tree. Astronomers think that clouds are dumb and big trees are dumb, but they're not dumb. They're beautiful. They're a part of the earth. Just, you know, you understand. Anyway, so once the sun is set, and we go a little bit. Notice this turn the lights on there. It's pretty cute. Look at by the time that twilight has ended, boom. It's right around here-ish. It's 8.30, almost an hour later, okay? This time of twilight can take quite a while, okay? And so when this happens, now you've got the stars, okay? And I should actually, let's, let's, let's do something fun. Let's, um, let's turn off the labels and markers for the stars first off, okay? And look, this is the thing that intimidates people. They see all these dots and they go, I do not know the names of any of these dots. Maybe have it, maybe have the... All these dots, fuzzy blobs, what is going on? What are these things? How do I know what, what's, what, what's in the sky? This is pretty crazy. What are these things? What's, what's this big bright thing, right? And this is the thing, is especially if you don't go out that often, it's pretty intimidating. You get all of these things in the sky and you're like, I don't know what any of this is. I don't know how to find anything in the sky. Please help me, okay? And the point of this video series is that by the time you're done watching these, you should know these familiarity, the, some of the dots. You should be able to find your way and you should be able to do what I do when I look at this, which is you should be able to go, ah, I'm looking north. That means I should hopefully see this. If I find this, I can find this and this and this. And you'll start to familiarize yourself, not with how you walk around the sky, but with what you should expect to see in the sky, which is also pretty important. So before we get into the stars, how do I... We already know which way north, south, east, west is, but how do I know what the stars are? What, 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 what's the good way to learn the stars? Well, first, I want to start by saying the best book, the best book for this, and I've talked about this before, is this book. This book is called The Stars. It's by H.A. Ray. You can find it on Amazon, but don't buy it on Amazon. Find a local bookstore. Find a local bookstore, and there's many, or if you don't have a really good local bookstore that you like, there's probably a lot online that are local bookstores that will ship to you. There's a local bookstore here in Tucson called Antigone Books. Antigone Books is the first solar-powered bookstore in the country, uh, entirely owned by women. Uh, first solar-powered bookstore in the country, period. And then it's also entirely owned by women. And they'll ship and order books to you, which is pretty cool. This book I've had for years. This is The Stars. H.A. Ray is the guy who did Curious George. And what he did is he wrote this book that looks like it's for kids, you know, it's got the same kind of drawings and things that like you'd expect for kids. But what it actually is, it's, it's a book where he takes and redraws all the constellations into things where they kind of look like what they should look like. It's an incredible 
resource. I really recommend this book. And in fact, when I do my labels, if I do my sky and doing labels, if I go back to surveys, uh, no, no, star lore, and I go Western HA Ray, it has the HA Ray built in to the program. It'll draw the lines between them as it is in this book. Now you're saying, wait, that's not real. Let's, a constellation is officially defined in astronomy as not a pattern of stars all lined up together. It's actually defined as a connect the dots, or as, as a region of the sky where anything in that region is the constellation. It has nothing to do with connecting the dots, meaning you can connect the dots any way you want. Now, I should also say, and this is pretty important, these stars in here, and most of the stars that we, when you hear about this and you hear talk about this, they're Western. That's what it says on here. It says Western, okay? Western. Now, Western means uh, generally what the Romans and Greeks gave us through European settling and colonization, okay? Now, what did I say earlier? What have I said many times? Astronomy is not a, just a Western thing. It's something that's owned by everyone. And so what's really amazing is that, and this is built into Solarium as well, is that the stars have different names for different cultures and different people. And what I'd like to also do when I talk about this is highlight some of that, okay? I'm not as familiar with this, and mostly it's just because um, it's a lot easier. You know, this is this kind of bias. It's a lot easier to find things that are really built for Western audiences and with Western stars and stuff. And most astronomy, the names of things and the names of the constellations and the objects in the constellations are named after their Western constellations. But it's pretty cool. There are websites I can link in the chat uh, that will show this. But also, you can say, you know what I want? I want to know Chinese astronomy and Chinese traditional sky culture. And so if you do this, it'll show the labels for the Chinese constellations, right? Korean, Macedonian, Maori, right? And like, it's not complete, but it does a pretty good job of showing some of these things if you want to in Stellarium. Again, Stellarium is totally free. If I do this, Stellarium, I can just go right like this. And boom, you can just go there and download it. Windows, Mac, Linux, and like it runs on nothing. It's great. It's 0.20.2, so it's like a free open source software. I don't know if it's open source. Maybe it's open source. Is, is it open source? Um, yeah, there's Linux source right there. It's a free open source software, so it's kind of buggy, but it's pretty cool. It also has lots and lots of really cool things where you can change and add new landscapes and add different markings and stuff. It's a really good piece of software. But for right now, I'll be teaching and talking about Western constellations just because that'll get you familiar, but we'll have whole sessions on other constellations and other groups of stars. So what you'd love, what would be really great, is if you could just do this. i just turn the atmosphere off. If you could just do, let's see. I forgot the key press for this. Ah, yes. If you could just do this, and all the constellation art, did the constellation art just turn on? If you could do this, and the constellation lines would just turn on right? Wouldn't this be great if you could go outside at night? And for some people, if you have the right phone, oh, there's, there's no constellation now with the HA Ray, that's why. Certain apps on your phone will allow you to do that. And there's really great apps. I use an app uh, that I like a lot that's called um, Sky Safari Pro. Pretty good. And it allows you to kind of do this and you have you hold your iPad up or your phone up. That's great. But what you'd really like to do it is without, right? You'd really like to be able to look at the stars and identify them and go, ah, I know that this is Corvus right here. You know, here's something cute. Can you see this right here? This moving and this moving and this moving. These are satellites. This program has a lot of optimism about the satellites you can see, but this is, uh, you know, currently at magnitude 5.6. So just barely what you could see with your eye. But, you know, that's something we'll talk about as well as the types of satellites you can see. But you should be able to look, you know, in the future, you hopefully be able to look at this and go, ah, that's Corvus. That's the raven. That's the crow right there. Not the raven, the crow, right? And that's the whole point of this is, is the hope that you can do that right so that you don't so that you can look in the north you can turn on your constellation art line you know lines but you don't already need that you're you're you're, you're, you're. Oh, sorry about that also am i have do i have like a crazy halo over here i wonder what this is all about uh, i think it's because i turned the lights on here i can i can make that go away let's like that there now you don't have to worry about that um so, uh, looking north, let's turn the, uh, the constellation lines off. Looking north, if we're going to be orienting ourselves, uh, yeah, there you go. It does, does look like a line of Starlink satellites. And this is the thing. A lot of astronomers are not super excited by these lines of satellites like here because sometimes when you're taking an observation, they'll just come screaming through. And that's a, you know, like you can see them here. 
And that's really uh, frustrating to have. If you've got anything you're observing here to have a big bright line go through it, it's a pain in the butt, especially when it's a whole stream of them. So uh, I get that Starlink satellites are cool, but like, man, it is a real bummer to just have these things all on this line, especially if you care about, you know, stuff up in the north. So the most important thing to start off our, our observing, and maybe not the most important thing for everyone, but for me, when I'm looking at the stars, the other thing that I want to have access to, especially if you go out and you don't want to take this book all out there, but I would recommend getting like a chair that's comfortable in this book. Or if you want a smaller one, I have the National Audubon Guide, which also has a lot of these things. The other thing that's free right now that you can go get is a sky map. And look, we can just do this. Ba -ba, and grab the sky map. This sky map right here is from skymaps.com. I can go link to skymaps.com right now, skymaps.com. And you can just go download this. I love skymaps.com. I love these. I have a piece of software that makes sky maps that look like this, but they're like fancier and I do it for various talks and things that I give. But look, you could just go and, and download this for free and it's for June. It's almost July, but right now you can see that it's it's set and has June in here. You can see June 29th, moon near Spica. It has a list of all the, the calendars for things. And it's got this great sky map. And you're saying, I don't know how to use a sky map. Well, I can show you how to use a sky map. The back also shows you some information about the, you know, important uh, details. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to take away a lot of the stuff in the sky map, but you should go to skymaps.com and grab this and print it out or put it on your iPad or something because it's good to have one that you can rotate around. It's going to be a little bit of an annoyance for me, but I can take away the sky map and just leave the circle here. And so what you're seeing here is what, you know, is a pretty, is a sky map. And what, what, when a, with a sky map, what they've just done is they've literally just taken the sky at a certain time of day and they've put it on a circle. So it's like, whoops, this is really hard to do because I'm gimbal locked here. Uh, back. So if I zoom in a little bit, this and this should be very similar, right? And so if I, if I make this go away, you can see that it's not exact. If I put the art on, you can really see the constellation lines. You can really see that, that like, it's not exact, but it's got a lot of the same ones, right? So here's one. You can see right here is Deneb on the left. I don't know if you can see my mouse right here. Maybe not. But Deneb on the left, which is um, Cygnus the Swan, is, is this swan right here. And you can see the swan drawn by H.A. Ray over on the left as well, right? And if you start tracing that out, you can see that it has Ophiuchus, which is down here, the snake handler, right? Like you can see that, that the, the thing is with a sky map, it's printed out for one like time and you kind of have to go assume well it could rotate and change a little bit because the sky the night sky will change a bit but we'll talk about how this works in a second but like like if i sorry if i turn this off again and like let me show you if i make time go by you can see that the things change right watch as the the positions of them all change as they you know the night goes on so this is an important thing because the earth is rotating as the Earth rotates around, we're pointing at different stars, right? And so right now, we're pointing at a set of stars, but later in the night, we'll point at a different set of stars, right? And you can see that over time, like it's, it's weird to see here because everything's rising, but if I like zoom back out, you know, and we look, just like the sun rises, stars rise and set, right? So now it's like one in the morning, two in the morning, three in the morning. So if we go back to that sky map here, you can see it says sky map shows how the night sky looks early June, late June, right? So up in the top right corner, it says that this is what the sky map should look late June, maybe around 10 p.m. So if I were to go to 10 p.m., if we go back to 10 p.m., da, 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 da. boom, we zoom back out. We do that crazy gimbal lock thing again, which is not fun for my audience, and I apologize. But, you know, you can see that this looks a little bit more like what it looks like over here. So if I, whoops, whoa, if I take the sky map circle, so we can see that we put it over it and move it away. And you can see that it, like, you know, the big dipper there, we, you know, like it, it the, look at how just above South, you can see uh, Scorpius and you can see Sagittarius, you know, like, so it does a pretty good job of replicating what you'd expect to see, what the whole sky would look like, right? But you're saying, how do I actually use this device? Well, we'll get to that in a second. But right now, remember that depending on when you go out at night, a sky map may or may not be very helpful, okay? And so in this case, uh, I'm going to turn this off for a second. In this case, it'd be helpful if you went at around 10 o'clock. So let's let's actually take it around 10 o'clock and let's pause the night there and just say, we're outside, it's 10 o'clock, and we want to understand where we're looking and what we're looking at, okay? So we've taken our sky map, we've printed that out, maybe we've got our book, we have a comfortable chair, maybe we've got a nice drink, some 
water if you're over legal drinking age a beer is nice so some wine is great for stargazing maybe you've got some music you're outside you pointed yourself away from lights like the lights of your house turn your house lights off and just like give yourself maybe 10 15 minutes where you're not looking directly at a street light or something you know where you can just look up and see the sky and let your eyes open up your eye your irises need to open up so that you, they can actually take in more light and the instant you look at light your pupils shrink and uh and when they shrink you get it's very hard to see the very faint stars and so what you want is you want to be able to see really faint stars and so you can you know this is a pretty good like seeing condition but it turns out this is very very good seeing conditions you could also imagine if you turn you know, like if you you know like like the, the, this might not be what you see you only you might not be able to see that many stars and i think we can actually change the viewing options if we change our stars we can go limiting magnitude is 6.5 right now but if i like drop this to like three you know or one you can see a lot less stars although maybe you can maybe that's maybe not what i wanted maybe i should do 6.5 what is the way in which it has refraction, Milky Way brightness? I forgot how exactly how to do this. It's not a huge amount, uh, huge, hugely important right now. But anyway, so for right now, let's just assume you have this great of vision. Maybe it'll be a little harder. When we're looking in the north, the first thing I always look at, because I live in the northern hemisphere. If you're watching this and you live in the southern hemisphere, I'm not going to talk much about the southern hemisphere right now for this orientation, but I will get into that. The southern hemisphere has different stars because you're looking, you're on the other side of the earth looking at different stars that we wouldn't be able to see because they're, you know, the ground blocks the way right now. But if you're in the northern hemisphere, like me, like many of the people watching, you're going to want to say, well, where do we start? What do I look at? And in the northern hemisphere, there's a great group of stars that is generally always visible around the year. Okay. Remember, as I said earlier, some stars are visible sometimes of the year, and sometimes the sun is blocking our way to see them. So right now, think about the sun. We're on the Earth going around the sun, which means that a group of stars, the sun is in the way. They would be visible during the daytime, but you can't see the stars in the daytime. But right now, the stars at night are generally summer constellations, and there are some where the sun is not in the way, like we're looking out at those objects. They're generally near the North Pole, and you can see them generally all year round because the sun is not going to block them, right? So if you have the Earth going around the sun, right, then any constellations around here are going to be pretty tough to see. But constellations up here, the sun's not going to block them, and you can see them as the Earth rotates generally all year round. We call those stars circumpolar or polar stars. And when we look over here, I can show you exactly which ones are polar stars. So are you ready for this? This is going to be pretty crazy. I'm going to make time go by really fast. So notice some stars in here don't really rise or set. They stay always up and they're around one star that you can see is kind of staying the same position right here, right? So in fact, let's do this. Let's keep it at like midnight and we'll do this. We'll, we'll make time go by month, 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 month. So you can see that like the star, the constellations are changing their positions, but there are some that like, you know, like this little pattern right here, watch that. Every month you can see it, that little pattern, except when it kind of goes below the horizon. Or this pattern right here, which maybe you recognize, watch that. Every month, except when it goes a little bit below the horizon for a little bit, you can see it in the night, right? So let's look at that. Let's go back, it's, not, it's 2025. Let's go back to now. Whoops, 2020. Uh, let's go back to now and we'll go to midnight and let's look for that. We're going to go back to 10 o'clock, which is where I said we wanted to go. So you're going to see this group of stars right here. This group of stars is where we want to start. It's where our journey generally will start each time I do one of these. Okay. And I'm going to get, what do you mean even at night? You can't see stars during the day, but during the night, every 
generally during the year, except if you're at some latitudes low enough, you can't see them because they're right low on the horizon, which is kind of a bummer. But there's two groups of stars that are opposite each other, and you can generally see one or the other. So we're going to start with one, which is right here. Okay. So if I'm looking north, I'm going to be looking around north to see what I can see and look for bright stars. I can see this little group of this W down here, and that tells me based on this bright star that if we look over here, I see this one. So here is where I want to start this group, this, this observation. So if you're familiar with this, this is, for the Western audience, the Big Dipper. And the Big Dipper is our guidepost for a lot of things, right? It's going to be very helpful because you can you easily see these stars most times of the year, except a couple months where it goes below the horizon at the time you might be looking at it, in which case you're going to want to go for this W. But for right now, this group of stars is a really good place to start. It's what I'm always looking for. If your house blocks the way, well, we'll talk about the south, southern hemisphere, southern sky in a bit. But for right now, looking here, you can see this group of stars, and it's really bright and pretty important. And around the world, different cultures have given this a different name, right? So if I turn on this lines, you can see how H.A. Ray drew it as part of a great bear. Right, And so this is the Ursa Major constellation, a pretty big constellation in the sky. And it's this great bear that, uh, that like, you know, but if you were to go and look at it using, like, the typical Western, it looks like this, which is really unattractive, where you have the bear's head over here, and it's a bear with a long tail. And I think here we can actually turn on the art, right? Yeah, we can turn on the art. And you're like, well, is that really a bear with this big, long tail? What the heck is that even supposed to be? But when we don't turn the lines on, just know there are three stars here in the handle of the Big Dipper and four stars here in the bucket of the Big Dipper. Other people have called this an axe. Other people have called this a wheelbarrow. I like asking people from around the world, what did you call it, right? Growing up, did you call this the Big Dipper? Anyone in my chat, did you have a different name than Big Dipper? Type the name in the chat. I guess what it meant was, do you mean the sun is blocking them? For a noob like me, you would think that the sun's always blocking stars because so you can't see the moon. Okay, so let's explain this a little bit more in detail. So, I've got, oh, I shouldn't use the Yoshi because you can't see the Yoshi. I'll use Samus here. Samus is the Earth. It's going around my head, which is the sun, right? And right now, Samus is looking at the camera, right? So you and the audience watching, you're a set of stars, okay? And so at this part of the year, Samus can see you. At night, which is where the sun, because Samus has to rotate around. Now Samus is looking at me, daytime, nighttime. Daytime, nighttime, right? So at nighttime, Samus is looking at you. You're the stars, okay? And over here, when Samus is looking at me, it's daytime. And then it's nighttime when Samus is looking over here. But you are on the horizon. You're low on the horizon. Samus is looking over here. Samus can see you. But also the sun's starting to rise as Samus goes around. So you are a, a group of stars that Samus sees at a different time of the, of the night, generally around sunrise, okay? But over here... When Samus is behind me, because Samus is going around, just like the Earth goes around the sun, now if Samus is looking towards you, the sun's in the way. So daytime means that you, the stars, are not visible. However, the stars at my green screen behind me, those stars are visible for Samus because Samus is looking backwards, and so those stars are visible. And so there are stars that are visible in the spring. There are stars that are visible in the summer. There are stars that are visible in the winter. And there are stars that are visible in the autumn. So here, I'll show you that. Are you ready? So if we go back to this, this is our summer stars, all right? We've got the moon in here as well, but let's zoom out a little bit. So here's our summer stars, but let's go and change the date and time window. This is an important question. I'm glad you asked it because I didn't want to, you know, it's like if we go a month ahead of time, same exact time of day, boom, all right? Now notice the stars are different, but you can see the dipper right here, but at the same time of night, one month later, over here. Right? Let's look at other stars. So I'm going to turn on the, the, the lines because the lines will be very helpful. Okay. So one month later, look at um, look at here. This is Pegasus. This square is the square of Pegasus here. One month later, one month later, one month later, one month later. Okay. But notice if we go back to now, which is 629, you know, this uh, constellation down here, which is Virgo, she's lying down here. Watch Virgo. She's still lying there. Can't see her. Uh-oh. I'd have to see her earlier in the night, right? If I wanted to see her at all before she set in the west. But other constellations are rising. Pisces here, right? You're getting um, 
this one right here, which is Aldebaran and Taurus, this bright star is Aldebaran and Taurus. Boom. Orion started to rise. It's, it's October, right? So we're now in the fall. Look, the fall constellations have some of the constellations you could see right now, which is you could see Deneb right now. Like we go back to now, six. Right now, Deneb is here. Uh, Cygnus the Swan right here. And Altair, the Eagle, and Aquila the Eagle, right? And Vago in, in the Lyre, Lyra right here, this little triangle. This triangle is called the Summer Triangle because it's visible during the summer months. But as the fall comes later, you know, the same time of night, it's down low the horizon. If we look in the, so now we're in the winter. And look, we can't see the Summer Triangle. Instead, we see Orion right here. We see a lot more really bright stars. Gemini, Orion. You're seeing uh, Canis Major right here. Really bright stars. Pretty big, important stars right here. I'll talk about some of these things. You can see that's the moon and, you know, what, what this guy is right here, which is Mars. We'll talk about that a little bit later. But this is stars that during the summer months now, the sun was in the way, right? If I'm looking at this part of the sky and I go back to when, you know, like, like when the summer is, the sun would be in this part of the sky. Couldn't see it. We're on the other side of the sun, right? And so then if we go keep going, you can start seeing here we have uh, booties, the Big Dipper here, uh, and, and, you know, like in st we're slowly starting to move back to the summer. And now we're one year away, one year, you know, pets, right? Or one year in the future. Pretty cool. So going back, let's go to 8 o'clock or tw 10 o'clock again. So does that hopefully help clear it up a little bit for you, Jay? Um it's confusing, but essentially, think you have to think about, and you don't have to for stargazing. For stargazing, mostly what we have to remember is some stars you can see during some times of year. And it matters what latitude you're at, if you're farther north or farther south towards the equator. But for right now, let's just imagine you're somewhere in America or maybe in the United Kingdom, and you're not particular. Like in the United Kingdom, you're a little farther north, so you're going to see a little bit less of the stars that are over towards the south. This group of stars will probably be less easy to see, you know. But for right now, mostly just know that some stars are visible during the summer, some stars, are, a different set of stars are visible during the winter. And that's why it's good to have, not to harp on this, it's good to have your sky map. Because your sky map will show you what are the stars you want to look at. All right. Now, this is assuming you stayed on one part of the Earth. If you went to another part of the Earth, would you see this? So, if you went to another part of the Earth, the only thing that would change would be that the only thing that would matter is your latitude. Because if you went to another part of the Earth, you'd still be on the Earth, right? So, like, right now, the stars I see at night are the same stars. I think there's someone in my, in my chat who lives in the United Kingdom, right? And right now, it's dark for you. It's night for you. You see the stars. But I haven't gotten around to seeing them yet because the Earth hasn't rotated me around to see those same stars. So as long as we're at the similar latitude, we'll see the same stars. But the only way to see the different stars is you have to go to the other side of the sun, which we have to wait six months for the whole Earth to do. So the Earth gets to do this. It's like a club, right? The only thing that changes is what time you're going to, you know, you can see it because right now I have to wait some number of hours until it's 10 o'clock and I see this group of stars. But if you live in the United Kingdom at 10 o'clock, you'd see you know, similar, like we can do that. Let's go to uh, location and let's go to uh, London, not London, London, Britain, boom, right? So London, Britain at 10 o'clock, it's six o'clock in the morning for them. But if we go back to 10 o'clock for them, here's something interesting. Notice it's 10 o'clock in London. Weird, the sun hasn't set. This is strange. The sun's still setting. What? What? Notice also, this is a Scorpius. I'll show it in a second. Or like the Big Dipper. The Big Dipper is much higher. When you go farther north, the sun travels over a longer time and takes longer to set because you're really pointing directly towards it at a certain latitude. And that means you get longer days. So if you're way up north, I was in Newcastle, you know, some number of years ago, and like the sun doesn't really set till 10, 11 o'clock at night. And man, that's really surreal for someone who's from Southern California, right? But if we were to go back to now, and if we were to go, so it's 1 in the morning, 1.30 in the morning for people who live in the UK. Um, and if we were to go to back to Tucson, uh, nope, it always does this. And I don't understand why you can't just press enter. Set it to now. I put it back at 10. Oh, 10 is in the future. 
almost put it back at 10. This is that group of stars that was way down the horizon, right? So this is the big difference, is that the Earth, the only really thing that matters when it comes to looking at the stars and doing stargazing is your latitude and whether or not you can see the stars, okay? If you're in latitude where it's in the Southern Hemisphere, you're going to see entirely different stars, right? Like if I go down at the exact same time, exact same time, right? And I say, you know what? I want to go to someplace here, right? In the middle of the ocean. Same, same longitude around the planet, but down way in the ocean, right? Whoa! This is that same group of stars right here that was way down on the horizon here, right? Now it's like right above us, okay? And if I went even farther south, if I was like, you know what? I want to go down in there, Antarctica, boom. That group of stars is now way up in the north. We had it down here. And look at this, this ship right down here, weird triangle constellation. Southern Hemisphere constellations were named, the Western ones were named, yeah, so you're not that far north, right? So if you're in the Inland Empire, if we go like, you know, and, and, and change the Inland Empire, like what, Santa Bernardino or something like that, right? Uh, is it not going to have San Bernardino? Boom. Uh, constellations are pretty similar to what I see. You know, this is 10 o'clock tonight. And if I go to Tucson, so like look where this guy is, right? Like the Scorpius. And if I look at Tucson again. Ah! Uh, similar place right so really that's what's really cool about stargazing is that if you just have one sky map that sky map should help you as long as you're looking at around 10 o'clock your time and you're not particularly farther north or south and some sky maps if you have specific sky maps uh you know they'll have um like i think that the ones in this book have it maybe um some sky maps will have, actually here, let's do this one. This one I know 100% will have the thing I want to show. You can see that it's not a circle, right? Like, whoops, it's not a circle. It's got like different lines down here that um, that show different latitudes. You can see a little farther south, a little farther north. So in this book, it kind of has a little bit of, of leeway, right? So anyway. For right now, just assume you can download this and you're going to get ballpark. And what's mostly important is important about this is that once you find a group of stars, you just use them to walk your way around and find other groups of stars. And so it may not matter that you might not be able to see everyone on the horizon, you know, you know, especially because when you're first learning stargazing, what you're really going to want to do is you're going to want to just learn a couple patterns every time you go out and just focus on, I want to really get Orion tonight. Or in this case, we want to focus really well on, so I'm going to turn off my constellation lines. I really want to focus on, in the north, the Big Dipper, right? So here's the Big Dipper. I looked in the north around 10 o'clock. I looked at my sky map and said, all right, sky map. In the north to northwest to west, it's probably a little bit over northwest around 10 o'clock. And the way that you have to do this, and this is kind of a complicated thing. Let's see if I can do this, if I can change edit the transform if i can rotate this by 90 degrees is that what i want to do uh no i want to do it by 180 degrees there it is so now boom with 180 degrees i can hold this so that the north right here is where it's where i know north is located so i'm holding my sky map up like that right in the sky and then over here, I can look and see, okay, what do I see? Do I see the things that I'm supposed to see in this? Well, in this case, I'm looking and I see, aha, these four stars are the four stars in the Big Dipper that I see on this picture, right? And if I look down here, that W is must be Cassiopeia that's down here in the bottom right, right? This little W down here must be Cassiopeia. And you can see Cassiopeia, and then you could go, ah, what else? What else can I do? This is great. Well, if I use these two stars, they should point upward to something. Well, let's look, they point upward to Cepheus. So do I see Cepheus up here? And if I look up, I see, okay, well, they're pointing to some bright stars here. Is this Cepheus? Is that a bright star in Cepheus? If I click on it, I find that it's Polaris. So it's not the bright star in Cepheus. But Polaris is a bright star here. You know, these ones, these little dots, they're not very big. It must be that they're not very bright. But can I see that bright star, which is listed on my sky map? And if I click on this bright star right here, you see that it's Alpha Cepheus, Al Aldemarin, or Alpha Cepheus which is the brightest star in the constellation of Cepheus, right? 
And so what you're doing is you're using the stars to point your way, right? So let's go back to the Big Dipper over here. The Big Dipper, once we find it on our sky map, so if you look on our sky map, we can see, you may have to rotate the sky map a little bit. So if I like rotate it slightly more, if I like change the transform and rotate it, like let's let's rotate it a little bit more. 170. Nah, need to rotate it a little bit more, don't I? Wish that this transform were centered. 150. There. So now I have the Big Dipper in the kind of the same way in the sky as the Big Dipper is here, right? So if I do that, I see that on the thing right here, it says to Polaris, the North Star. It's got this little arrow, which is interesting. So it's, can you see, can you all see that, that like, right? It's hard for me, but like, you know, I guess I can point right here. It says, this is the Big Dipper, and it says to Polaris, the North Star. And these ones point there. Let's see what that means. So if I look right here, these two stars right here, which are named Doobie and Merak, Doobie, Merak, which is Alpha Ursa Major and Beta Ursa Major are the brightest star in this constellation and the second brightest star in this constellation. These two stars point to this star. So you guys see that? They go doobie, 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 do, which is a dumb joke. I did every time I did planetarium shows and it always got a laugh from one person and I've always been proud of that. But this, these stars right here just point to that star. And that star, we just saw a shooting star right here, which is pretty magical. You can make a digital wish. That star is Polaris. That star is the North Star, Alpha Ursa Minor, also known as Arukaba, also known as Sinosura, also known as Tramontana, Tramontana, also known as Yildas, also known as Mizmar. So what's that? What's the North Star? Well, the North Star is a pretty important star, not because it's the brightest star in the sky. In fact, these stars, when you look at them in the night sky, look brighter than this one. It's not that bright. You can see the number here is negative, uh, is 1.95. Here it's 2.00. The smaller the number, the brighter it is. This one's 2.30, so it's a little bit brighter than those. Um, but like, you know, it's not particularly super duper bright. Uh, people are always astounded. Uh, there you go. Dr. Jones is the person who laughed at my dumb joke. But this star right here is the star that the northern hemisphere or the North Pole points to. If we all took a trip to the North Pole, in fact, let's go, let's go do it. Let's go freaking do it. I can do it right now. Can I do North Pole? Is that gonna be a thing? Um, gosh, I wonder if I can even do the North Pole. If I click on the North Pole, if I click way up here, sure. Oh, it's going to be hard because it's the summer, so you're not going to have any... In the summer, the Earth is pointed towards the sun, the top of the Earth, so the North Pole doesn't get nighttime. So it's a little hard to do. So I, if I change this to the winter, there. And we look directly north. Do this again. We look directly north. Notice as I rotate around, gimbal lock, one star stays there, right? If I turn on the, uh, the constellation lines again, you can see this star... Watch, stays in the same position because the North Pole points toward it. Pretty cool, right? And because the North Pole points to it, it will always be north. No matter where you are in the Northern Hemisphere, if you can see that star, you're looking north, which is pretty important. So let's go back to Tucson. Um, let's go back to now. Go to 10 o'clock again. You're looking north. So how do we know that? How do we do that? Well, if I go back down here, we zoom back in a little bit. So not crazy FOV. We use big, the Big Dipper, which was pretty easy to find. We know it's pretty generally visible. We follow the bucket stars, not the stars in the handle, not these two stars in the bucket, but the farthest stars from the handle, these two stars. We follow them inward as if it's spilling its, whatever its contents are. We follow them to the right. We'll see the, the North Star. And that North Star, if we go back down, is the North. Meaning that, looking towards that star, that's the North Star. Pretty cool. And it's part of Ursa Minor that you can see if I turn off... Um, the art here, you can trace it. It has a little bucket itself, a little handle. It's much harder to see, especially if you live in a bright bright spot, like Riverside, Orange County. I, I'm from Orange County, and I can still see this. I lived in LA for many years, and you can still see that it's much harder. Generally from Orange County, you can see this, and maybe if you're looking, you can see these two stars, which are Furcad and Kochab, which are the guardians of the pole, because they protect the pole from a uh, dragon, which we'll talk about in a future session, okay? Important other cool things about this, uh, these, this star right here, can you see that it looks a little bit lumpy? If we zoom in, you can see it's actually two stars, Alcor and Mizar. 
and they're a really good test of your vision. If you can see that there are two stars, if you can differentiate that, you have pretty good vision or pretty good eyeglasses, right? Um, but we'll be using this over these, this series to look at various groups, other constellations, right? So you can see that these arc right now, this kind of curve of the handle of the Big Dipper kind of curves over this way. And if you look on our sky map, you can see the same thing, that these arc right here, the curve of the, of the arc, um, actually, I can't do that. The curve of the arc right here arcs its way up. Whoop, it's really hard to do this backwards to this star right here, which is called Arcturus. So that's why we say arc to Arcturus. We arc to Arcturus. And Arcturus says Alpha Boo, because it's part of booties, right? And this right here is not a star at all. That's the moon, right? If we look at it, you can see it's the moon. It's in this phase right now, half full, pretty bright. And if we were to continue going, if we make continue this arc, we go to another star, which is Spica. And so there's two ways we say we either arc to Arcturus and speed on to Spica, or some people say we arc to Arcturus and spike to Spica. And Spica's in Virgo. And so you can see, if, okay, I'm going to see if I can do this really well. Yeah. If we, if we arc to Arcturus and speed on to Spica. And so you can see, whoops, I can't do it right now, but you can speed to Spica. You can see it makes this curve right here, right? Make my life even easier. Whoop, what am I doing? This is so hard to do. Arc to Arcturus, speed on to Spica, right? And this is the type of stuff that I do when I'm out observing. When I'm out observing, I'm saying, all right, how do I find something I'm familiar with? And then how can I look over in the other directions, okay? I only have like less than 10 minutes in this in this video, and, but I wanted to showcase a couple more important things for this month. And we'll talk about a little bit more for the summer constellations. But another cool thing, if we're following these stars, is that we can use where the moon is. The moon will change its position every night, right? It'll move. And so you can't use it every night and go, ah, the moon will be there. Sometimes the moon isn't even visible at night. Sometimes it's visible during the day. But right now, the moon's pretty visible and it's near Spica. Meaning, if you just go out tonight and it's clear, just go out tonight and see if you can find the Big Dipper and go out tonight and see if you can find the moon and look for the stars, the bright star that's to the right of the moon, generally 10 o'clock, and a little bit above the moon, you'll be able to find Arcturus and Spica. And look, you're starting to know star names, right? You can also look to the left if you're not way, way, way far uh, north where this is not visible. And you can see this. And this is one of my favorite things to see in the, um, uh, in the Northern Hemisphere. It's the Scorpion, Scorpius. It's got this bright star here, which is called Antares. And it curves down to the tail. And these two stars are called the Cat's Eyes. And it's a pretty cool S that looks like what it's supposed to look like. Most constellations do not. Sorry. Cancer the Crab looks like a lame like set of lines not a, not a great constellation scorpius has the claws has the body has the stinger on the tail very good constellation and the thing is is that all you have to do is if you just you can even just take the stars here and just trace them over right like similarly if we use this i probably shouldn't be using the i should turn off my sky map but you can just trace these over and you can find them by like looking over in the direction that the tail of the um uh, of the dipper is looking at right? And so then next to it, you can also see a couple important things, which are pretty neat, which you also won't see all the time, that are going to be between it and Scorpius in the south, southeast, which, oh, providing you don't have a bunch of buildings in the way or trees in the way, are Jupiter and Saturn, right? And so these are two planets. Here's Jupiter, slowly moving across the sky. And Saturn, pretty cool. And one of the neat things about July, and we'll talk about this next month, because uh, I'm going to try and do this once a month, is that July you'll be able to see quite a few planets. One of the cool things about seeing planets, and I'll talk about this next month, is they won't twinkle like stars. They'll be very, very bright, and they won't twinkle like stars. But as a wrap-up for this whole thing, what I really want you to do tonight is I want you to figure out, go in your backyard right now or wherever you're going to do this, pull your phone out, and figure out which way north is. And kind of note that down in your head. This is north. This is the direction north is, right? Because tonight, if you go out around 10 o'clock with some wine, with some water, with some tune, look for the Big Dipper, right? That will show you where the North Star is, so you know exactly where north is. You can look for the W, which is Cassiopeia, which we didn't talk about very much. And you can use this to arc to Arcturus in booties and speed on or spike on to Spica. And then you can now say, all right, if I know which way north is, I can look exactly 180 degrees behind me, know which way south is, and I can look and see, ah, there's Scorpius. 
If I look to the left of Scorpius and Antares, the eye of Scorpius, I see Jupiter and Saturn, which are bright in the sky right now. You can also look to the right and see the moon. You can see Spica here. Pretty cool. All just in this one session, we've taught you some stargazing stuff that will impress your friends. And let me tell you, if you're single, there's nothing more romantic than taking your honey, taking the person you've got eyes on, consensually saying, hey, let's go stargazing. I think it'd be fun. Taking a book out like this, maybe getting a phone app, you know, like the one that I was using, Sky Safari uh, Pro. Maybe like, you know, your fancy nerdy book like this, the Audubon one, but this one's pretty good. And just saying, you know what? Let's go see if we can find some stars. It's sometimes frustrating, especially if clouds roll in, you know, but if you go out, you might not even need a book at all. You could just go right now and print out this dang sky map, right? Just print this thing out and just bring it with you. Bring one for your boo. And if you bring that out, you can sit there and say, all right, well, you got to rotate it. So if I'm looking west, the word west is in the bottom. If I'm looking north, the word north is on the bottom. And just try and see if you can see the stars. Maybe you'll fail. Maybe you'll succeed. What matters? Oh, Dr. Jones, telescopes, that's way down the line. Telescopes, not as important. If you're going to get something right now, seriously, you'll be way better off just getting a pair of binoculars, a nice pair of binoculars. I have a pair of binoculars in the closet. Great for moon looking, great for Jupiter and Saturn. Telescopes. That's like a whole different set. For this, it's naked eye observing. This is essentially what I want by the end of this video series is I want you to be able to go out at night and say, guess what? I can figure out where I'm located, where, I, where I'm looking, what types of stars I should see, where the other stars are. And by the end, you're gonna be knowing the really crazy ones like Delphinus. Hopefully some of you have been noticing you've probably said Delphinus over here. Um, so this is Delphinus. I can turn on silly lines. Dolphinus is a pretty lame little constellation. It's not that lame. Does it have a dolphin? A little dolphin there, right? Uh, you'll know about the summer triangle. Ooh, another shooting star. Make a wish, everyone. And then at that point, we can talk about, you know, how you might want to buy a telescope for various things, okay? But right now, my recommendation is skymaps.com. Is H.A. Rays the Stars? Especially because, like, this book has so many really beautiful, like, get a hardcover version. Buy it from a local bookstore. Have it ordered from a local bookstore. And like, you know, you'll get a bunch of information. You'll be like, you know what? I really want to figure out if I can find Leo tonight. When, what time is Leo up? And it'll tell you right here when Leo is visible and whether or not it should be looked at. He does a pretty good job of saying what stars are, you know, when you should look at them. But I'm going to finish there. Uh, and if you have questions, you just let me know. Just send me a message. I, I guess I can turn on my, my text here. Is this, you know, my, my Twitter handle or, or my um, Instagram. You can follow me there. Just send me a message on one of these surfaces. Twitter is even easier than anything. Um, I, I really appreciate you watching, and I'll see you next month when we talk about July stars and constellations. Um, but let me know if you do. So if you see something and, and you go, just send me a message. If you're watching this on YouTube, send me a message. I love to hear that people are using this. If you have questions, if you don't know more, um, send me a message. Bye, everybody. Bye. It's nice to see you. It's nice to talk. Bye. So I am going to end the stream here. If I don't end the stream correctly uh, on YouTube, it'll just cut it off. And so I got to end it at the right time or else it won't. So I'm going to end it once I start waving. All right, there we go. Thanks, everybody. It's nice to see you.